San Lorenzo is the first track on the first Pat Metheny Group album. It was composed in 1977 and from reading about it uh, in the Pat Metheny songbook, I learned that it started from a few phrases composed by Pat Metheny, then came Lyle Mays, organized them into uh, a piece, uh, adding a lot of his own melodic material. One of the most significant things that Lyle Mays did was to use his supreme command of the 4-4 and the 3-4 meter and to add rhythm to his melody to create what I like calling multi-dimensional um, melodies. And one and two and three and four 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 and one. He creates melodies that break the boundaries of rhythmical patterns. Let me show you what I mean. Let's compare it to the absolute opposite. Let's think of the pattern of one, two, three, four in four, four meter, where the one is always the strongest beat. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I think the distinct color of this initial section of San Lorenzo is coming from blurring the boundaries of where is tonic, where is dominant, and the whole notion of tension and release. So harmonically, we have the going to B flat and E flat, and it would have been natural maybe to do Dominant, more like tonic here. But instead we have, you know, the opposite. We have this, you know, distinct sound of uh, tonic and dominant blurring. Uh, tension and release is not yet there. Both the tonic and the dominant, the B flat major and the E flat, are coming from the E flat major scale. And right now we're in a stage of some kind of a primeval music, uh, like created long before the forces of tonic and dominant were formed. So maybe it's like watching a vast lake uh, in a summer day. You just get to see the reflections of light. Nothing's really happening. It's like being on the first day of creation before the sky was separated from the water. And suddenly, in this whole universe of E-flat, So this phrase by Pat Metheny is made of four chords. D flat major seven going to C minor seven going to A flat major seven. So the tonic E flat is not being played here. And these three chords, the C minor seven, a flat and G minor belong to 
but the D flat doesn't. It's the neighbor chord of of C minor seven. So as I said, from this uh, from this liquid universe of E flat, suddenly we hear this D flat, the chord that doesn't belong. Maybe kind of a wrinkle in the midst of all that uh, E flat smooth surface. I also want to show you this beautiful part here. So two things I would like to show you about this part. The first one is the exquisite matching of the, the melody the, and the bass. Uh, I think the bass is written in the spirit of Jaco Pastorius and in general I'm hearing some um, influence of the sound of weather report on on this music. And the second thing, the music here, as well as in the first part, is not yet controlled by the forces of tonic and dominant, by the forces of tension and release. And the selection of notes to harmonize this, this line, especially here. Uh, the notes are taken from the scale. Not, we don't have... Uh, dominant to tonic. These are notes coming from the from the environment of E flat. gets us to the piano solo, which is entirely based on E flat in the bass with, I don't think more than uh, six or seven chords on top. And it always starts from, from the tonic E flat with the flavor of uh, the pentatonic scale, influenced by this, uh, this uh, initial statement. Um, and at some point, moving to A flat, but notice that with the right hand, I'm not going to A flat, I'm just keeping the E flat. This E flat and B flat with the A flat. Back to E flat. At some point, we're getting to minor territory. getting back to E flat and this sus chord that opens things up a bit and then always
triplets, you know, very expressive. Again. <laughs> 